Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the mixed media artist behind this channel. And this week's video is part four of exploring new layers. Last week was more layers. This is new layers because I'm just giving you a little bit of a sneak peek of how I'm using, how I use my abstract art journal pages to explore um, different shapes and different ideas uh, for uh, a new series of mine. And as you can see, I have a ton of blues and um, these are all the same blues that I've listed before. Uh, they're golden. I'll start from, uh, let's start from the right to the left. Teal, Payne's Gray, Manganese, Cellulene, then it's raw umber, um, the other, uh, no, raw umber, sienna, and nickel azo gold. And uh, I just thought, well, why don't we just uh, go through what I'm using this week? And of course, that's the high gloss fluid medium. So it thins out and it makes really thin layers. And um, that's what I'm practicing using. What I did notice, though, and as you'll see, and uh, um, I'll discuss other things while something else is going on. Um, by the way, I used the uh, gloss fluid that I just showed you to tape down the edges only where the paint is going. And um, excuse me, this week I have got the craziest head cold. And um, you might notice uh, my voice does sound different. <laughs> so I won't talk too much, but I'll talk just enough uh, just to let you in on my art process. I keep getting a lot of comments. Uh, thank you very much, subscribers, for um, your comments about, of course, my voice um, and my thinking process. Yes, this is a uh, stream of thinking. I do not rehearse. I am just doing this and showing you as I go and while I'm learning because I love uh, stepping back and watching myself and then I can see it more clearly, especially things that I may have missed, decisions that I've made that, oh, you know what, this would have been better. I know it's all hindsight, but it's sort of a way to uh, cheat in a way. Uh, so, <clears throat> so I might cough throughout this video, so uh, um, that's just how it has to be. So there's the teal, and um, uh, the, the dark teal was the uh, Li Liquitex Basics, and then the real beautiful turquoise teal, the light teal, is the golden. And those are all fluid. Um, the one blue that I still want to try, and I will keep doing it on these abstract art journal pages, is cobalt blue. Uh, ultra, ultramarine blue needs to be like, whoa, it is so powerful, and I just don't know if, if I need it. So I'm activating um, the, the substrate, and I always love starting just with a regular pencil. And what I'm doing, uh, basically, it's an abstract interpretation of um, the Georgian, Georgian Bay. And I've been talking about the color palette in previous videos of the Nicolazzo Gold, Yellow Ochre, White, Black, Payne's Gray, Manganese, and uh, maybe a little bit of, um, which red was it? It was uh, Quinacridone Red, because it, really, it was really on the cool side. But just a little bit, because, uh, and I think last week's, I sh last week's video, I showed you the painting of the colors that inspire. Now, um, I've been focusing so much on the colors. I'm still experimenting with the types of marks. And at times you'll see that this uh, painting and the others that I've worked on today are too close to landscape. So, and that's okay. I just have to work through it. 
because I used to, you know, and, and this is what this is. It, it is a sky, rock, and water, and that's what I used to call this series. But I want to take it further um, to a more abstract interpretation. So I'm experimenting with um, uh, like more like color fields using um, uh, vertical lines as well as hor horizontal lines. And this swooping action, it's the energy the essence of the place that I'm trying to capture abstractly, conceptually. So I know it's pretty lofty what I'm after, but I've been trying to get this for so long. So as you can see, the paint's gray. I made the thick lines and I really haven't explored this. So this isn't in my uh, repertoire yet as to what does Payne's Gray do when I mix it with this over the lines. And what I see is um, starting off almost with a black, uh, because if you're gonna put all of those layers on top, I do want the shadowy images of those layers way in the back that will end up being covered, but with very translucent layers on top, mixed with opaque still using differences. So those are the things I'm experimenting with. What differences really speak to this feeling that I'm after? So we'll just watch what I do. I'll just call out the colors and um, just some brief thinking. There's the manganese. It is so beautiful. Um, and what I'm trying to do when I'm covering is not cover the whole area, um, and but build and leave little swaths of other layers underneath showing, little peaks. And then sometimes things need to be veiled completely. But then you go back over top and it's all of that history. And rhythm is what I'm trying to capture. Water seems to be really strong in... I think all of my work, and uh, that's what I've been doing with this other course, is really diving down deep as to what it is I'm really trying to express. And uh, that's fascinating. I just love it. So as you can see, I am just drawing each layer because I don't want the blues to mix with the warms. I don't want green. I want them to be pure. And we have the Titan Buff. So I thought, okay, instead of white, a very cool color. And as you can see, I'm also experimenting here with, uh, not so much experimenting, but I'm giving it to thought as to what kind of brush strokes work. And you'll see these little specks, oh, which are so annoying. And when you have acrylics on top of a glass sheet, um, when the edges dry, sometimes uh, really fast, and these little specks of dried acrylic mix in with the middle. So I may have to switch to a moist palette or something different, I don't know yet. If anyone has any ideas, please leave a comment. So I'm just trying to maintain marks and I'm trying to free up. I'm still not even close as to the free marks of some of the swooshes that I want to put in. and uh, But I know I'll get there. Um, it just seems to be such a slow process. And I think I've spoken about this before. Um, a lot of artists just say they've been, they've been doing this for years and they've only just approached the abstraction or whatever they were, you know, whatever they're looking for uh, in the later years, and you know, maybe that's just normal. You know, it's not a race. So, I love the combination of white and the nickel. Uh, no, and the uh, the um, neutral color there, which is the Titan Buff. And um, I'm putting it up in the sky, uh, and I don't want it to be sky. You know what I mean? Um, I want it to emulate sky, but I want, 
I don't want it to be your typical landscape in the order of how, you know, how things go. I want these energies, these things to be mixed with any, um, connected, and not necessarily placed in that way on the canvas or substrate or whatever I'm going to be using. So that's the thing. You can get stuck in your mind. It's like, I want to think out of the box. And I do believe um, switching this page around probably might have helped. So I need to start doing that, even though it's, you know, it's a this vertical, rectangular. But just getting out of that format. And that's what this, the scoring in usually does um, the these horizon lines. I don't mind them, but I want a multitude of them. Um, different, uh, it's like, uh, and I know uh, I'm sort of borrowing this from another artist, and I forget her name, but she, she said it, it's exactly what I've been looking for, is layers of life forces, or layers of energy, layers of elements layers of reality and uh, so there we go so I'm starting to free up a bit and uh, not bad so looking at this now okay I need to do more of this and this is what you need to do you know not to record what you're doing but while you're doing it or while you can look back uh, in some way um, if you like something if something is working or is close to what you're looking for do more or remember to do it so I will keep I keep so many notes and uh, I will write these notes down and I usually do it after I uh, record do the voiceover for the video because then I can really step back and look at what I'm doing more objectively uh, just like you are <laughs> So please leave a comment if um, you're liking this, if you've also been trying to find, because abstract art is so amazing. It's, uh, I call it from the inside out. And that's, that's where it comes from. It comes from within. And so when you're trying to connect it with something um, from the outside world, and connect those feelings. It get, to me, it gets a little tricky, but I will do it. I love the challenge. So this is what I like this, and this is this is what I like. And this is called scumbling with your brush. So you put it on the side, and it picks up a lot of texture. Definitely need to do this. Now, notice I did not use my um, catalyst wedge. Um, I notice on the pages, it's okay. But I think my Brer works better in the art journal. The Catalyst Wedge looks works really well on canvas or board, uh, wooden panel. So starting to play, putting some vertical marks. But now here we go. I know this has come from memories of mine and I don't, it was too realistic. It's looking like plant life. And it, nope, it's not happening. So out of there. And now I'm going to mix that with blue. And I'm just, now I'll think, okay, let's just make a texture here. I may not like the value right now. I did like it lighter, but then there's so much light, I don't have enough darks. So then I'm going back in. And <clears throat> this uh, mark, um, I'm, I'm not liking, but I understand when you're first learning how to do this, you don't, it's just like, okay, what do I do? It's so different. And we're building our marks. We're, we're building our knowledge of value, composition, differences. Um, not so much color theory. I don't, I don't worry about that stuff. Uh, color families and what works together is, a uh, is, 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 is great to go down that, that road. So then you see as I uh, used the brayer across, it eliminated and just flattened it out. And that's what I'm trying to also do. Flatten the space 
So you're not drawn into it. I want the space to be flat. I don't want a, um, a long, you know, like perspective. I don't want any of that. I want it totally flat. So this is one of these painting thingamajigs and it's okay. Um, it doesn't make a perfectly straight line, which I don't want anyway, but I want the edge to be not created with, with a brush. So then probably the brer. So now we're, we're getting to sky land, uh, which is okay. So sometimes you just have to let things happen. Sometimes, uh, so I'm, I'm right now then I decided, okay, let's think of these as color fields. So we'll abstract it more as we go and you'll see. So stay to the end because I do a crazy thing. I end up using the, the tape that I've taped down here on the edge right in my painting because I just loved all the colors on it. I thought, oh, great, because I was looking for a piece of collage. The tape was right there. So let me know what you think about that. And I found some beautiful orange to complement all of this, uh, the Payne's Gray, which is very purpley, uh, as you can see here, compared to the teal. And I'm not really happy with that. So I'll bring in some more, or I might even go totally dark down here. Okay, so that's really good. And I love how the brush, see how it lifts it? Just enough so you can see more of the under layer. So I'm just experimenting. I grabbed a bunch of tools. This is, that is also a catalyst tool. But it's so, um, I don't know. I use it every once in a while, but I still don't like it. So, liking that somewhat. Now, what? once I start doing the color fields, I'm wanting to make every area a different width. And I want to think in odd numbers, threes, fives, or sevens. And what I'm doing there is I'm making the value really go very close to the upper blue area. So it's it's uh, it's still still very different. It's still oh, let's see if you if you close your squint your eyes, you get more of a black and white version of what you're doing. It sort of helps a bit, even though uh, turning turning the image into a black and white image really helps. So it's still a little dark. And then now I'm really going dark on the bottom and I'm really liking that because I usually do that and it just gives it a base. <coughs> Excuse me. So I realized, okay, that's really, doesn't really do anything for me. And as I add more nickel azo gold, I'm realizing that, okay, those two, those two, two areas were too similar in size. There wasn't enough difference going on. So I make a few changes. Uh, I find a beautiful piece of orange collage. So stick to the end and uh, let me know. So now, now the layers are building and I'm not really worried about its outcome. Just this process of learning what these marks and layers different combination, that's what we call it, new layers for me, will do with each other and will it cause the effect, create the effect I'm looking for. So, neutralizing the top, I'm liking that a lot more. Oh yeah. Now, Still, those two, notice those two areas are very same, very similar in size. And I'm also looking for a difference, which is a hard edge and a soft edge, solid, translucent. So what I think I'll do in the next little while, I'll make a note 
as to which types of differences work for what I'm looking for. And you can see they're too equal in size. So I end up adding a much narrower um, piece uh, just to the top edge. So there's the Payne's Gray, very watery. And drips, splatters, all of those things will really work. And that's what I've just thought, oh yeah, I thought I've, I gotta remember that. I love those. I used to paint just with um, uh, palette knives, drips, and um, that's before I knew and understood color field painting. And now I, um, and, and to do this truly, this, this is not, you need to start with super bright colors and then, of course, they're going to change totally, but you still feel and see um, the layers underneath. So there's that manganese blue is looking much better than that. Couldn't really, sort of an iffy value. And because it's really, really complementary with the um, orange that, in that direction that I'm going. And I'm really loving all of the, um, uh, not real texture, but visual texture that I'm creating. And while it's wet, I'm still scoring through it. And I think in the future too, I will uh, try to add uh, some horizontal marks, maybe within other areas. So they're there, but it, they won't interfere with the overall composition. So I thought, okay, perfect time after the layer is dry, of course, to bring in some more line work. And um, I'm just using an ordinary student grade pa oil pastel. And then I thought, oh, yes. Now here's some vertical. And these don't, the, you, the, you don't, see them uh, very much after I add the really strong layer of nickel azo. I thought, wow. So there we go. I added a narrow band and it's looking much, much better. And I think, oh yeah, that was just a little water spritz just to have some dripping or just a different kind of layer. Oh, so there comes some water down there. And, and this doesn't work the same as with on a canvas or a panel. I have to remember this is just paper, Michelle. All right. So warming up that dark area down there, I think really made a difference. Putting some warm in here, but trying uh, and making sure that's dry. So it's not going to mix. And I don't know if I leave that or... Oh yeah, here we go. This is my usual go-to. So um, I don't mind it this time. They're more square than with the Filbert brush. This is the, the chisel. I forget the proper name of brushes. It's terrible. I should know that. And it's a slightly different uh, value than the ones up top. And so I'm just playing around, not really thinking, just responding. And what I really want is the, I'm so fascinated by the sparkling of water. And I think everybody is. It's very hypnotizing. And I want some of those aspects in these with different amounts, and maybe not in all of them, but in a very abstract way. So I think I, f I was doing some research earlier uh, before it was uh, voiceover time for the video. And really enjoying... Uh, and, and, and here I'm on Pinterest, I'm searching through, and uh, then I go, ooh, look at that. Here, it's one of my own paintings, earlier one that I cover, ended up covering up, and 
there was aspects of this painting that I really loved, but there was stuff that I couldn't stand. And of course, now that we learn and have progressed so much farther, um, and that's, you know, I, I'm thinking that's where everybody wants to go. So you're more comfortable. Um, I found out how I want it to do it. So to do a sparkling or sparkling of sort of that hypnotic kind of effect with those orange dashes or whatever color, it's a slightly darker value and then, then you can stamp or paint a circle within it and the, the values change. You can even have three different values. Um, they're not, they're sort of overlapping each other and it really emulates it, 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 that energy. So I can't wait to try it on my next one. So um, stay tuned for next week's. And I will be, yes, I still will be using these colors because I have not, and, and that's another thing too. Some of you, oh, she's using the same colors again. Well, you know what? There's a reason for this and I will break it up and uh, because those pinks and purples, the ones that I did before, oh, those are so fascinating. And I think this will, uh, you know, why do I have to stick with these colors? I might add one more in, maybe a yellow. Still, see, that's not going to change it, but the, the magenta, quinacridone, quinacridone magenta will really sparkle it up. So just thinking of those odds, um, making sure my areas... Uh, aren't all the same. They're, they're different. I've got a real visual texture, big wide one in the middle, a slightly narrower one, which is dashes. So I'm, I'm liking the differences that are happening, but still not happy with that upper horizon one with the orange and the very light. So I change it. It's so, it's just last minute. It's sort of an add-on of the video. So um, you could probably tell, but I just had to do it, <laughs> which is great. I love when things turn out that way. So leave a comment. What are some crazy changes that you've made to a page, a painting um, in the last little while that was just an amazing discovery? <laughs> totally unexpected. So, oh yeah, here's the dots. I'm learning how to do these better. Um, it's uh, uh, the Métis dot painting artist from out west. And I just can't think of her name right now. Oh, she's amazing. Um, but the paint has to be a certain um, fluidity or consistency is what I'm thinking of. And there's many different tools that work. Uh, I've got those little uh, tools for the for the beading, but I just grab the back of my brush uh, for this one. But for a more um, a finished work, I definitely would uh, need to experiment if I want my dots or maybe circles or the other thing that I mentioned. So I just threw these in because I thought, oh, that what a nice contrast that would be. Maybe create that energy. Uh, over the dark, so I have a really high contrast uh, down at the bottom. Okay, probably doing some more thinking. <laughs> yes, okay. So my Posca markers are always right there on the left-hand side. And what am I doing there? Oh, yes, those little dashy lines. Love those but try not to do them, use them so often. Trying to come up with new marks, and that's the, another purpose for this, uh, for this, for this abstract, or abstract journal, or journaling page. Oh, sorry, I can't talk this week. Darn cold. <laughs> yes, yeah, so orange, blue, mixing it up, and that's what I'm taking of the layering of that energy from that other painting that I showed you in last week's video. So if you haven't checked out part three, uh, check it out. Uh, these two are, they're similar in that 
the same colors, but uh, still very different. Okay. So then I realize, oh, I didn't take the tape off yet. So I do that. And then I realize, oh, I better warm them up a bit. Even though I did the gloss underneath and oh, wow, what a difference it made on paper. <clears throat> and of course, while I'm drawing, I'm still getting new ideas, which I love. And that's looking much better. I notice, oh, okay, way better. Okay, here we go. The tape is off. Here's the reveal. And then I think, okay, I'm not done with the, uh, the dots, the, the, the water. They're just, there has to be a flow and there has to be a rhythm. So it's how you place them. Um, I might think of a, a light line, but then you'll see it. So I'm going to experiment more with those. And uh, I have a selection of um, abstract art journaling and abstract art uh, on my Pinterest pages. So uh, that's another thing that I haven't said, that I um, all my work is there and all these other artists. So it's amazing stuff. Um, not my work, I would say that, but um, the stuff that I... I, I, I do research on and go, I want that effect. And you just grab pieces. and That's how I've learned. And I think a lot of us have used Pinterest that way. <clears throat> Try not to do that anymore. Uh, I, I really don't need to anymore. It's more of a, if I want to check out like the water thing, and then I hear it go and I find my own painting. And that's the one I love the most. Crazy. So notice here uh, how the manganese, those lines, have really added to this. So, more horizontal. There it is! Uh, sorry if I startled anyone. There is that. I wasn't happy with it. It was too realistic. So, it still is, but yet it's more abstracted with this band of orange and this really cool piece of collage. And I have to make more of these. So that is newsprint paper with, and, and there's that tape. I'm so glad. That would have looked super right there. But yet, you see, it's the same width and it's too close to the orange. So down below is perfect. At least I think so. Let me know what you think. And the handy X-Acto knife. And I just wanted just this shape in there. And I, and I, and I think, I think it, it definitely, and see how the swoosh sort of lines up with the other turquoise, um, uh, lines in, in, within this big shape. So then I just emphasize that. And I don't know if I'll do that in the future. But I'm using my finger with the Payne's Gray. And uh, Payne's Gray and Manganese look uh, together are amazing. And there it is. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this very different abstract art journaling page. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and if you're new here, hop on over to the abstract art journaling group on my Facebook page. Thank you, and, and I'll see you in the next video.